Hi, this is Leslie. Hope you're well. In this video, we're going to take a look at three important charts and in fact, three important warning signals for the major stock markets. And I'm going to explain to you what these charts you're seeing here mean for the stock markets. Plus also, I'm going to explain to you what the new recession signal, which has recently occurred, a new powerful signal and what this means also for the stock markets and the important consequences it will have in the next several months. Plus also, I'll briefly mention Bitcoin at the very end of the video as well. All right, guys, let's dig into the chart of stock markets. Join me. All right, guys, welcome back. So before we dig into the chart, the stock markets, and as I mentioned, I'll talk about the stock markets first, and I'll briefly mention Bitcoin at the end of the video. First of all, I've come to this beautiful park over here, just a very serene and calm place to just walk around and, you know, enjoy some of the scenery here. There's also a nice stream uh, behind me here as well. So I have to say to you, there isn't much sun at the moment. Okay, guys, so as you probably have noticed, the stock markets have managed to rally further to the 5,400 level. In fact, this is a level of resistance that I've had on my chart for several months. In fact, the two major targets I've had on my chart, the upper targets I've had on my charts for the last several months, have been 5,337 and also 5,400. Here's a very brief clip of a members video I made some time ago where I mentioned these specific targets. Let's have a look and we'll come back. Looking for a move eventually to the levels I mentioned the yellow line is the rule of seven projection that I mentioned, 5337. The brown line for me is another key target I have, 5403. And that's based on the 2618 extension, 2618 Fibonacci extension of the waves one and two that gives us those targets of 5400. I'm still looking for one more push higher into that region. 5337, the rule of seven projection, and 5400 in the next several months. All right, guys, now as you probably remember, in my last video that I made about the stock markets, I mentioned that I sold the majority of my stock holdings, my stock ETF holdings, at the 5337 level on the S&P. And I mentioned that I'll keep the remainder just in case the markets goes higher so I can sell the remaining part of my position, for example, the 5400 level, which is what I've done at the moment. So essentially now I've sold the majority of my stock holding positions in the stock markets. Now, in my previous video, I explained to you in detail some of the reasons why I have sold the majority of my stock holding positions at these key resistance levels when the stock market rallied, for example, to those targets that I had on the charts. Now, before I go on to discuss those reasons, I noticed some of the comments on my last video, which was essentially most of the comments are positive. I want to thank you very much for the great comments you left me. But there were a few comments, which were probably some from trolls, who were just basically saying, hey, Alessio, you've lost your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. The stock market, the S&P is going to go all the way to 6,000 and you're going to miss out. So essentially, some of the comments were just mocking me and ridiculing me, saying I have no idea what I'm talking about and that I'm making a mistake by reducing my position size and getting out of the market. Okay, so I want to talk about this briefly because there's some important points I want to mention here. Firstly, as I'm sure you know, when I'm telling you that I'm selling the majority of my stock holding positions, that I've sold the majority of my stock ETFs in the S&P, I'm not just doing that for no reason. I gave you some important explanations and reasons as to why I'm doing that. Because there are three important warning signals for the stock markets. In the last video, I mentioned at least one of those warning signals. Today, I'll mention two more. So the first important warning signal, danger in the stock market, was this one. The fact that we have the Hindenburg Omen and the Titanic Syndrome, powerful danger signals on the stock markets. And I explained to you that these signals, when they occur, this chart you're seeing here, courtesy of Jason Geppert, shows there are internal weaknesses, major weaknesses in the stock market that usually come before a major drop or a correction in the stock market. In fact, the previous times when this signal has occurred, the stock market has usually dropped by at least 10%, sometimes more, sometimes by 20% or more. In fact, when these signals occurred in the year 2007 and in the year uh, 1999, that was right before a major top in the stock markets, before, of course, the stock markets began to drop and crash pretty hard. The second important warning signal for the stock market is this chart you're seeing here, which I showed to our members recently. This chart shows a divergence between the NASDAQ and the percentage of stocks in the NASDAQ that are above the 200 simple moving average. In other words, what you're seeing here is what's called a breadth signal, a breadth divergence signal. In case you don't know, breadth is a measure of health of the stock market. It's like opening the bonnet of your car to see if the engine is running okay, if it's still healthy. So essentially what you're seeing here on this chart is a major divergence. 
volumes. Notice the NASDAQ has been going higher, while the percentage of stocks in the NASDAQ that are above the 200 SMA, the 200 moving average, have been making new lows, making lower lows. That's a major negative diversion signal on the NASDAQ that is usually a sign of major weakness in the NASDAQ and in the stock markets in general. And usually when we see this kind of warning signals of divergence in the stock markets, that also typically comes before a major correction in the stock markets. The third important warning signal is actually something very few people even know about. And this is courtesy of my good friend Manuel Blythe at Dow Theory. Trader Manuel Blythe at Dow Theory recently said in his newsletter in June that a new recession warning has been triggered in the United States. Now, a recession at the moment is not official yet. The NBER, the National Bureau of Economic Research, has not yet announced a recession officially. And that's because it takes some time for the NBER to officially announce a recession in the United States. However, Manuel Bly and Jack Shannon of the Dow Theory, they use a special formula and a calculation which is based for example, on a rise in unemployment numbers and several other factors to indicate when a recession becomes highly probable. So the Dow Theory recession indicator has now triggered a new powerful recession signal for the US. The US is only a few months away from a major recession being triggered. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, Alessio, who cares if we're in a recession or not? What does it matter anyway for the stock market? Here's where it gets interesting. They said in their June newsletter, that whenever their models, whenever the Dow theory models trigger a recession warning, that means the major stock markets, for example, the Dow or even the S&P, could potentially drop by 10 to 16% in the next several months. Again, guys, remember what I'm saying here in this video, the warnings I'm talking about, they do not mean the stock market has to drop immediately or even the next couple of weeks. They could do, anything is possible. But what I'm talking about is that these warnings, including the recession warning signal, they indicate that the stock market could be due for a major drop, a major correction of about 10 to 16 percent in the next several weeks and months. So this could take several weeks and several months to play out. So in case you're scratching your head right now and saying to yourself, Alessia, there's no top in the market, there's no drop in the stock market. What I'm talking about is likely to happen in the next several weeks and months as we head to the end of the summer period and likely to September, October. Of course, it could happen very quickly, but I think it's more likely to take some time, like some weeks and months before we see that major drop or indeed correction of about 10 to 16 percent. So guys, in this video, I've mentioned at least three important warning signals of impending danger for the stock markets. There are other warning signs too. For example, notice this weekly divergence. Notice how the stock market has made higher highs on the S&P, but lower highs on the MACD on the S&P. Another major sign of weakness for the stock markets. So you could make that four important warning signals. So guys, the people out there, for example, the trolls in the comment section who say, Alessa, you don't know what you're talking about. You've lost your mind, you're crazy. There will be no drop in the stock market. Well, guys, just remember, those people, all they can do is make fun. They cannot bring anything to the table. I'm showing you data and evidence as to why there's increasing risks of a major drop in correction in the stock markets in the next several weeks, where we could potentially see an intermediate top in the stock market and a likely drop and correction in the markets in the next several weeks and months. By the way, guys, I want to make something very clear. When I use the word top in the stock market, I don't know at this time whether it's going to be an intermediate temporary top for the next several months or if it's going to be a long-term top. So at this point in time, it's too soon to make that call. All I'm saying is there are increasing risks of a major correction and drop in the stock markets in the next several weeks and months. And that's why I decided to de-risk and reduce my exposure to the stock markets by selling the majority of my stock holdings. By the way, guys, I want to repeat this point one more time. This video is by no means a recommendation to sell or to short or buy into the stock market. This video is only for educational purposes. All I'm telling you is what I'm doing. I am not saying you should do the same thing I'm doing because I could be wrong, all right, guys? Even though I don't think I am wrong, nevertheless, the markets are chaotic, uncertain, and unpredictable, and anything can happen. Two final points before I finish this video. The first thing is, it's not a surprise that a lot of people are mocking and ridiculing me probably in the comment section of this video right now, saying, Alessio, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're crazy. There will be no correction. There will be no drop in the stock market. Remember, guys, the sentiment cycle. As you can see here, the sentiment cycle clearly shows that when there is euphoria and greed in the major stock markets, when there's a lot of optimism, typically at this time, analysts who have a contrarian point of view, anyone who has a bearish point of view on the stock markets will get ridiculed. So that's why, guys, I don't care if people want to ridicule me and mock me in the comments. That's okay. Go for it. Those trolls can embarrass themselves if they want to. The second important point I want to mention here is this. Some people have actually made a very good point. They said to me, Alessio, look, you cannot time the markets. It's impossible to time the markets properly. So why not just hold? Just stay in the market. Now, that is true to some extent. I can sympathize with that. Timing the market is not suitable for everyone. But here's something I want to say about that. Do you think buy and hold or holding forever, never selling? Do you think that is always a 
safe strategy? Do you think the strategy of never selling, always holding, do you think it works in the longer term? Personally, I don't think so. And the reason is this, the biggest enemy to an investor or trader is not the market, it is actually ourselves. Psychology is the biggest enemy you'll face when you're investing or trading. Why? Because even those people out there who say they will never sell, they will always hold, even they, at some point in a bear market, will give up, panic, and sell at the worst possible time. You see guys, every person has a threshold for how much pain they can tolerate. Everyone has a degree of tolerance for pain, but there comes a point where they cannot take the pain anymore. They cannot contain their fear. So even those people out there who say they will never sell, they will always hold, even they, the majority of them, will at some point give up, panic, and sell at the worst possible time. That happened, by the way, in the year 2008, 2009. In the major crash and bear market we had in 2008, guess when the majority of people gave up and sold? They capitulated in the spring of 2009, just as the market was bottoming. Anyway, guys, that's really what I have during this video. I think a major reversal, some kind of a major correction and drop in the stock market is gonna come because of increasing risks. Again, this could happen in the next several weeks and months, or perhaps even sooner in the next few weeks. And by the way, guys, as I mentioned before, when the stock market eventually drops, I'm looking to buy at lower levels, at cheaper levels in the stock markets. And not because I think the market will go back to all-time highs. It might, it might not, I have no idea. But purely to trade the bounce, because I think after the market drops, there will be a like bounce as well. So I am looking to buy again into the stock markets at much lower levels, at cheaper levels, eventually after the market drops. Just a few words about Bitcoin, because some of you asked me in a previous video, hey Alessio, what do you think the impact could be on Bitcoin if the stock market should begin to roll over and drop into a correction? Well guys, firstly I would say that each chart needs to be judged on its own merits. So the Bitcoin chart will be different from the stock market chart. However, because both Bitcoin and stock markets are positively correlated, which means they have a positive correlation, I think that if the stock market begin to roll over and drop in a severe correction that could likely put downward pressure on Bitcoin as well. So I don't think it'll be a good thing for Bitcoin should the stock market begin to drop, roll over into a correction sometime in the next several weeks and months. All right guys, make sure you join me in the next members video. We're gonna go into detail on the stock markets with Elliott Wave counts. And by the way guys, in the members video, I'll cover my targets, my key targets for the markets as well. And also we're gonna cover the chart of gold and Bitcoin as well. And by the way, if you're not a member, you can join on that link you see right there. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now. Cheers.